So hey, 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 great to uh, connect. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, and was... uh, really neat what we did in this last week. Mm. Yeah, I was, I was watching the videos, and you had you had very good meetings. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, it's a uh, very uh, interesting. The uh, team purpose kind of captures how far we can go with this. Uh, it's kind of like um, we're testing out a new way of, you know, kind of coordinating. And um, yeah. to have a productive meeting or a meeting that that is uh, appealing um, is is an interesting um, like feedback and and data. Yeah, no, I I uh, I've realized that everyone is actually uh, grabbing as much as they can from pretty much everywhere because uh Dulles is is great he's i don't know how he keep he says he doesn't he can't keep up keep up but man he grabs stuff from everywhere yeah it'd be really interesting to see how the material emerges um i think um the theory would say it is simple and um you know i think uh it might be um because uh there's a lot going on and suddenly out of nowhere that um, that uh, I, I think is going to be manageable. So it's, it's, it's not, I think it's gonna be sustainable. I have no reason to think it's not gonna be sustainable. <laughs> Oh, please no, please don't. It's we're building a beginning. It's been the it's barely the first week. Um, or like the first two weeks or so. Exactly. Uh, so um, I still haven't been able to join the the fractal meetings. I I missed today's one because I I didn't make it on time. It was like I know there's one today, but I thought it was on. It when it got there, it was already an hour. And he had already uh, finished. And I'm like, ah, I, I missed it on the that they were was trying to pay the most attention. But there's another one on Saturday, right? Uh, I would say yes and no. Um, the fractally meeting I'm interested in is only on Saturday. Okay. So the one you missed today is not one that I'm tracking. All right. But wait, wasn't when we're supposed to to be having meetings like four times a week? Oh, only one, uh, one, uh, one uh, fractally meeting a week, and uh, the uh, the uh, suggestion is uh, that uh, we as a team uh, attend three out of every four weekly uh, meetings. Among us. Uh, yeah, so all four of us would uh, would attend every single week. And then if someone uh, has something else to do, then they don't attend. Uh, and on a cumulative average, uh, we would, we would uh, our goal would be to have attendance by all of us um, at minimum three out of four weeks. But I think that we're gonna wanna be there more than three out of four weeks because we get paid every time we go there. Hold on, hold on a second. I just heard you say three out of four weeks. I thought we were going to meet four times a week. Nope. Ah, right. So it's even <laughs> less on. It's a lot fewer than I thought. Yeah. I was trying to do this. I wanted to show you, but it wasn't ready yet. Let me send it. Let me send it to you. Because yeah. I'm, I, I'm not using the computer. I'm using Zoom on, on the phone and I'm looking at it on the computer, but I'm going to show you a screenshot. Yeah, I realize that this is. I said Notion is pretty good at this. I don't know if you if you've used it. I like it because of it, and I want to make uh, the same thing you did on on the on the Google Sheet form uh, page or whatever. I wanted to do it here as well because it looks to me it looks more organized like this, and we can have stuff like this. We can have uh, uh, you know. Uh, nice and good looking stuff that we can check or uncheck as we go. 
Yeah, like a uh, calendar. Take a calendar a ca oh, I see. Okay, you, you've got that. Let me look at that. So I, I used, uh, you know, this is really sweet to hear out of your mouth because uh, I would love to use Notion. And uh, right now uh, I tossed it all in the sheet. And uh, uh, with Notion, uh, I say, uh, you know, like the the faster we can get that stood up, uh, the better, um, because uh, migrating to Notion, in my opinion, is is a um, is is a huge step forward for uh, bringing all this stuff together. Because pretty soon we're gonna want to like we're gonna want to prioritize and and just have kind of low hanging fruit that you can always pick up on whenever we're wanting to engage. It could just be like, you know, knocking this out, finishing sending, you know, just one after the other. So uh, to be on Notion would be like a hundred times more organized than that that item that uh, I put together. I was getting to it, but at the same time, I've been thinking, because I, I don't really know if if I make this, will you have permissions for editing everything in here? Or um, I don't it, know if I can grant you that. Um, yeah, I think you can grant me that. And it's important that we, if you go away, we, we don't lose control of the, of the platform. So somehow with sharing, um, access, uh, that, that has to like, so I think we're going to have to have multiple people have comprehensive administrative rights um, to whatever we end up doing. And ideally it would tie into something really clever that's happening with web 3.0. I mean, I don't think notion is it. I, I think hive is pretty good for this social. Uh, I'm going to start, I think using hive because of what we're kind of thinking out about how do we make this sustainable? I want to be able just to drop and go and people just to take the whole database and run with it. Um, it's pretty much able to be done on web 2.0 so the notion thing might might be all we do yeah right well if you want me if we want to keep on um, doing this you let me know and i'll and i'll give it a shot i also sent a, a an example of what i was telling you about the 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 logo on the on the chat i'm not very good at, at choosing colors i've never been but it's more or less what i was what i was trying to tell you that at the moment well, how about this? How about find out if you can grant administrative, full administrative rights to uh, multiple people on Notion? Okay. If you can, uh, let us know, uh, or everybody really know in the in the chat, and then um, we'll do an exchange of those uh, those uh, access uh, function, like those uh, somehow grant the keys or the the username password stuff, just as long as we know we can do that is all we need. And then I say, if we know that we can have multiple people uh, being able to take ownership of that database, then uh, um, go go forth and have a blast. Because that second picture you sent me looks looks beautiful with the image, the, uh, the uh, symbol. Yeah, yeah, it does look pretty good. Actually, there's a uh the favicon right on right on there it's it's good to see it there it's it's, it's the small things yeah 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 exactly and um that first it was the first image that, that you have on there yeah so um because i use the calendar for notion because those fractally guys that were building eden originally was using notion and then they were going to build their entire platform from ground up to include video and video conferencing and everything and so one day maybe we'll we'll uh we'll take a, a repo fork off of their code and kind of have some i'm not really sure how their project management code is going to fold into fractally because i think they're going to end up having probably some project management tools on fractally you know because it's all about teams and coordination so uh you know hopefully they do it all and then we can just keep on this fractally team it would be a really good thing to test uh, because we want to be testing fractally is like two or three out of our our uh, team purposes are about uh, yeah yeah the other day i noticed the other day they were they were having this discussion and on the on the eden member uh, telegram group i was like what's happening i don't get what's happening they, they were kind of discussing about, about fractally being something 
apart and different from from Eden, and saying, "All right, we're gonna keep topics separate." And I got confused. I said, "I don't know what we're, what what we're fighting." Well, you know, I have an interpretation, and that is that Eden is a currently self-sustaining uh, platform. And in my opinion, it's apples and oranges from Fractally. Okay. So um, do they, do they uh, have some, uh, some sense of uh, overlap? Uh, yes, they do in, and in multiple ways. And I would suggest that that was a source for confusion. And I'd have a hard time somebody convincing me that they were not distinctly diff two different um, platforms. Yeah, but the, the things that the matter of the, of the discussion was meaningless to me. I, I said, I thought, I don't get why they are, they are fighting. But well. Well, you know, I, I know that if, if we were to uh, spend a lot of time on, on uh, in the Eden member to get, to get used to the argument, hopefully we would figure out what the miscommunication was real quick. Yeah, yeah uh, probably that. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, maybe ask somebody, hey, what's up? <laughs> Can you tell me the bullet version? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know that Eden was just now used to elect a, a second uh, a generation board uh, for, uh, for a, um, that the mission is basically help the EOS token holder or help the EOS community of token holders. That was the, the point they could put on their mission was very open and very vague uh, after deliberating and kind of entering into some existential questions about who they were as leaders of Eden. They came up with, well, we're here to kind of help. Okay. Okay. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so now in the future, that's very different from what it is right now. Right now, they're here to help. In the future, I'll say maybe there'll be a verifiable uh, governance uh, candidate uh, for uh, for creating policy and uh, and and even even managing funding and, and allocating it to a treasury or what have you. I mean, because uh, they get paid to support things, so there's these weird funding stream interlaced into it. So they are an accountable kind of responsible entity of entities that are electorally based, which means it's a pretty decent distribution of like people's interests in the community. <laughs> so it's great. What is it? It's not the government of EOS. I know that. But they do lord over their own collection of, of Eden members and who Eden is relative to EOS. I don't think we know it yet other than it wants to help EOS. It's being funded by US. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so that, um, that's exciting. That whole thing is exciting to include you flipping flipping your phone. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And not only that, I just received the notification of the trans of the transcript from the from the the EVM launch event. It's right up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I heard that launch event. I was very happy. As soon as I said trust EVM with an EVM token, I was like, the branding alone, I was like, done. That's great. But, they they published the the recording of the of the of the event on YouTube, uh, cutting up all the all the Chinese parts because they were doing it in both English and in Chinese. And that's awesome. I don't know if you you heard it, but that was crazy. The the lady that was doing the the translations, she was mad. She was great, but uh, it took a lot of time, and so the event lasted like I don't know more than two hours. So they cut up all the Chinese parts and polished it on YouTube. But they also polished a, a like a like a summary, and later yeah. on, right now they just published the the transcription, and. Yeah. They were one step ahead because I was thinking that we should have done that, and yeah. uh, and, uh, and 
there was this uh, this plant from this uh, this tool that a dog shared with us the the one that that could oh no wait it was all the all the other the other way around he had a tool for for converting text into voice but we needed the other we needed it the other way around we needed to to write down all the all, all this pitch and uh that takes time that takes a lot of time mm. but we could have we could have come up with a with the trans with the translation of, of the whole thing but now since it is out now maybe we can do that because yeah. we're not we're not completely i mean we're shaping up and basically just having the first baby steps but i don't know if we can if we can start like releasing material translated material and showing people what we were going to do what we we're going to do so they can start seeing what start seeing from us so maybe i was thinking uh translating the the quarterly report or something like that i i know at, at this stage it's just gonna be manually and humanly done but all this is something that, so they start seeing us so let me ask besides the enf uh documentation what other entities uh can we do quick grabs and begin translating long tales of languages and uh, different formats modes whatever i mean uh right now everything you said is basically perfect from my perspective uh in terms of our our uh, agreement in other words in other words um what what you're saying uh i i, I agree with completely uh I, a, a quick a quick grab of uh usefulness with the enf right now uh even mm -hmm. even as much as right literally with this document that you're talking about like so let's uh i got your notion i'm putting i'm putting uh right now uh enf uh documentation um uh on on my uh, quick list but i hadn't put it on the uh the google sheet but uh basically and as an example we have like quarterly report uh we have the uh evm announcement yeah i mean there are there's a lot of documentation from the enf that's going to that's going to give us a lot of work because they have the api plus uh, blue all the blue papers and uh some other documentation that they have released over the last months and uh, those are documents that are going to be there and they're going to be relevant for a lot of time for all a right. while that's great so so we that is so exciting um uh, not only but i didn't know that they were going to do it but helios rising also probably published a, a quarterly report and i thought well this is another quarterly report that we should keep in mind because it's, it's one that people are going to look for so basically um we're gonna we're gonna start this list with enf and helios uh, for basically all their documentation, beginning with their obvious documentation, like quarterlies, blue papers, and et al, like any announcements or what have you. So um, I'll put that on our, our near-term items. And what I what I want uh, to see is within the next, uh, you know, few weeks, uh, I'd like to see, uh, I really just want to, I want to see kind of what we got for rapid fire turnaround. Uh, like, it, it doesn't really matter to me because I think our future is well intact, but it does matter to me in terms of an exciting kind of flex, so to speak. Because if, if we do quick turn and it turns out to be as easy um, as uh, what Douglas is doing, or, or better, better yet, as easy looking and intact as the enormous quick turnarounds and learning curves and solutions that Douglas is producing, then we can get those quick wins and be like, yeah, we're going to be the subject matter experts here, obviously, of translation in, in, in quick time. So, so we can manage getting together fast. We can manage, oh, let's just 
real time solve problems because that's what we're already doing with a couple groups. And let's add these groups to the lists of real time problem solves that we're already doing. And let's watch, watch how that maximizes our workload because there's certain maybe limitations and resources, but I haven't seen much of that yet. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see how this goes, but consider it done. We'll, we'll go execute on, the, on, on this. Yeah, because look, I'm, I'm aiming, this is going to be a huge lot of work because it, it is, I'm aiming for the ones that, are, that, are, that I know that are a lot of work. And there are so much, there are so much so that the bees are not doing them because it's a lot of work. Okay. But it's not that much that it cannot be done by us. Because um, let's say, for example, the, the fractally white paper, I haven't had the time to, to watch a whole, but to, to check a whole. But it's something that it's not in the plans of the bees. And the, the quarterly reports of the ENF, the, the blue papers of the ENF, those are not in the bees' the plans for translating. And I know this because I'm, I am in there. I am also translating for them. And what they're doing right now, I, I suppose it's because of the um, the funds and I don't know, workload and, and everything, but what they're focusing right now is on EOS Weekly's reports, on on announcements, small announcements that are small announcements that are important but are not that much of a trouble to 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 translate. Okay, so well, I'll tell you. To, to, to tomorrow, hey, uh, finish your thought. I, I cut you off. I didn't mean to. No, that, that's it. That's what, that's what I was, I was going to say. The, this is a lot of work, but it's work that no one else is actually doing. And I know this because it would be, it would be awkward to start doing something, but it turns out that someone is already on it. So just to not, you know, uh, let's say cause any trouble to someone that is already doing the work and is aiming to get paid for that or something like that, because I, I don't want to cause that awkwardness. Yeah, um, well, uh, I think uh, you'll like what I have seen and know and understand on this subject. That is tomorrow morning um, at, uh, 1400 UTC. Uh, I am and translate me, Ryan Lloyd, is meeting with Jesse as a follow on. Um, so a week ago, we met and we were able to put in Jesse's hands something that he. Uh, uh, he was able to, uh, to, to see as potentially very useful for um, taking out an enormous amount of the time or cost of translation, of documentation. So what that tool was, was it was a, it was twofold. One is it's an administrator uh, portal for a document load that you receive and want translated. So you can add all those documents to the uh, document list. And then every one of those documents, you just, you just click on what languages you want to translate them to. And then you assign a whitelisted group for that language, say you and eight other people for say Spanish. And you say, go. Now you get the email, you go into your user or, or this is a twofold, it's, it's a trainer and a translator. So you will go into that portal of a trainer translator portal, not the administrator, but the trainer translator. And you'll go, as soon as you log in, you'll see that, that the administrator or, or Jesse has, has released a, uh, a document for the, say, Spanish community of whitelisted translators. And you'll see it's a flag. And, and then you'll, you'll look at it, you'll click it, and it'll say, you know, do you want this job? 
And here's like, I think a dollar amount associated to it, whatever. You hit it and then you got two tabs. One of them says, here's the original. The other one says, go forth and have fun finishing off this translation. Because what I haven't told you is that second tab already has a neural network uh, version of a 50 to 75% solution translation. Now you're looking at a 50 to 75% translation and all you have to do is correct it. So, so now you send the correction back to Jesse after you're done and the neural network receives your training of the neural network algorithm. And Jesse receives the document that is finalized So I hope you heard that because I think your video is frozen. So we'll come back to this shortly, if you can hear me. Uh, you're frozen, so. It caught up for a moment. Awesome. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so you were saying that you were, you get a sixty percent. Uh, you get the sixty percent of the job already done. So you have to correct it and send back the correction. And the neural network receives your correction, so it gets a a bin that gets filled up with training. And once that build gets big enough, they update the neural network for that language, the algorithm. Okay, so it keeps, you keep doing the, so every time that you do the job, it's gonna be better and better because the machine is gonna get better at, at translating. It's gonna learn from you. Yes, and the cost of translation when we do, when we scale is gonna go about 20 times cheaper than the larger high scalable translation solutions that are in the works, uh, uh, the enterprise levels. So this and, and the trainer, you'll get, you'll get basically a token. Um, this is on a, right now, this is on a chain, on chain. It, it's, uh, I haven't, I don't understand it perfectly, but you will be accumulating a TMN token for every training event. Okay, so, but wait, it's it's not on chains yet. It's on the NEO, N-E-O blockchain. And they're going to hopefully have a contract on the EOS blockchain by, uh, by Palmelo season three. Okay. Okay, I, I think there is a, a contract like a public contract on, I don't remember if it was, because I remember in, in the first season of Pomelo, there was a, a team that had a, a proposal for having a public, uh, a public contract, public token contract, something, something along the lines of that. So it was basically a public contract that you could use for, for, you know, making your own token on the, on the EOS blockchain. But I don't remember if it was EOS starter or if it was another team? I think it was Starter because they were they were trying to do that, but I don't know of another team, but I think I might've heard of one also launching a token, but um, uh, right now, um, 
we are discussing how to how to do that and Shakruz in our on our team Shakruz mm. he he has said it's very easy it's just how do you want to do it so we really we really think we just want to peg it but we don't know it would be nice to be able to include all the bells and whistles of good practices and whatever is in those blue papers to apply to a smart strategy for if you're going to build a token on EOS, how would you do it? And we really hadn't thought of that. Uh, but it, yeah. I know it is somewhere because I've seen it, but I don't remember where exactly. But yeah, it's just like you say. Yeah, because uh, if you if you if you peg the TMN token, you know, how's that done? If you create a whole nother token, how is that done? Um, if you if you want to build a fancier contract with different dynamics, how is that done? Uh, none of those questions are answered, and um, it doesn't matter that much to me as long as we're heading in that direction. Because uh, what what is critical is tokenized training, and and uh, tokenized training on EOS. And um, the neural network uh, um, being the, the engine. So we got to take advantage of, of that. We don't want to like not use a neural network to solve that problem. Yeah, it's, it's amazing that it's already done and it's so good. But um, I wanted to ask you something because this is not clear to me. Is that translate me network a partner with the EOS Translation Foundation, or how is that? How are they not, or how are they the same? Uh, they are a for-profit organization that has created the neural network, and they have created this tokenized roadmap and solutions-based like work. They, they've created that. They've put that work forward and and built a a, a, a model that aligns with a technology and an approach that I like. And and I sponsor that. So I've I as a representative and a member of this community have said, hey, I think we can really use that and iron out the way forward for the future. It, it just grow basically. <laughs> so how do we dot all the I's and cross the T's so that we get translation, they get users, they get a smarter algorithm over time. Uh, the trainers get tokens. Um, and, uh, and, and now on a different, uh, on a different scale, the translation foundation, as you can probably tell, far exceeds the scope of what translate me will be doing. That's, that's just this. What we want is to be the comprehensive. We want to we want to be comprehensive. You know, we want to like reach into all the different corners and and at least be smart on every different aspect of translation across our community. So, I I think you know, I, I think that, that that far exceeds the scope of, of Translate Me's, um, you know, uh, operation. Um, okay, so they're basically, um, the, the, they're basically putting the machine. What, what did you say, printing the machine? Yeah, they're putting up the machine, we're printing up the users. Yeah, yeah, hey, that's a good one. So we're the, kind of spokesperson for the users or the community and uh, um and and they're the guys that need users <laughs> yeah yeah because I've, I've been on the port on their portal before but i it's my fault too because i haven't really uh put a lot of time into researching and how exactly does a the thing work, but uh, I know they have a they have these contributors uh, algorithm for you know um, 
uh, rewarding people with the token and stuff like that. I didn't know that they already had the token on, on Neo, but they did not ha have it on, on EOS. But uh, now I do. <laughs> now I do. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, uh, exactly. And, and a year and a half ago, they had a, a decision. Do we want to, but, but Neo gave them 30 grand, you know? And um, we've realized recently all they need is, they need many, many different chains, basically. They would want to like plug into all kinds of different communities, you know? And um, how that's going to happen, if that's going to happen, we don't know. We just, we just want to, I want to work with a group with a technology basically like that, that deals with tokenization and neural networks. Simple as that and uh, see if we can't um, be successful. So, um, so, so right now we're, we're sewing the fabric and testing more than, more than two or three things at once. You know, we want to solve the problems of communication. Uh, even more so, we probably want to explore fractally if it's gonna be successful because human coordination actually transcends maybe even translation in my personal opinion, because the idea of cracking human coordination and accountability and uh, identity, not to say identity, but everything that identity would imply um, would be so grand. So cracking communication across borders, like as a foundation, really improving the bandwidth in all the corners that we all like, that's a big one for me, but I'd say, I don't know, you know, they're both very, very high. That's why our team purpose is so segmented um, and leaning toward frag fractally because that's what we're doing is testing, testing human coordination, like in a decentralized land where- Yeah, because that part is not easy. No. So the part of coordinating human forces, it's, no, nah, that's the most complicated part. And I, I have to say, I, I admire how, how ES support has been doing. I don't know, but they, they've been doing a lot of, of work and I know that, that they are very organized uh, as a, you know, administratively speaking. And um, they, they're using Slack. I guess they are not using Fractally. I don't know, I haven't really checked because I haven't really checked on uh, on all on all the other uh, teams are, are that are on fractally, but I know this part is a, the hard part because it's difficult to to hold people accountable and you know let's to make them do what they the tasks some certain tasks uh, the way the way it's supposed to. I know this for a fact because I myself I find myself sometimes that I'm not being productive and I, I have to say. Sometimes I'm just like, give me a task and you you will realize that I'll be doing that and, and focusing on that alone. But when, when not having a, an organ, a sense of organization, you don't really know what to do and how to, how to move forward. And that is a hard part. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you, uh, I liken I like the, like the, uh, the action where you apply a, t a scope to a task, you apply a shape to a team, you apply structure to the mission, you open up reliable fields for communication, you open up a sensitivity and a like, workability inside of the the field of of of, uh, of dynamics in in the team or in the in the process of, of doing what we're doing and i liken that all of those features to just basically plugging a plug into the wall and the circuit suddenly has a a voltage with the voltage suddenly has a load on it and it can just put a bunch of uh, information through the wire you know, but without kind of giving it its, giving the peanut butter to its jelly, you're going to have just like non-expressive uh, voltage just 
potential energy, basically. And Dan Larimer would say something like, if you can, if you can align the incentives, then you can unleash a vast amount of, 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 of volunteer. I think he used the word volunteer this last week, an army of volunteers. Well, that word volunteer is going to go away because they've wrapped a tokenomic uh, process into this design. So the idea is we, we're going to be uh, accumulating uh, respect tokens in fractally uh, like I have for whatever it is, you know, a month or two or three. And um, if the platform is successful, eventually it'll go on a market and, and those market will get populated by people who want to fund something if it is productive. <laughs> so if we have put some encasement around this army of volunteers and turned it into an army of productive workers who are receiving rewards, for the value that they're that they're uh, creating, uh, I theoretically we're all extremely valuable, creating value all the time. Like right now, I think in the future we'll be well compensated for this conversation that we're having right now. It's a very, 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 very valuable conversation. You know, I mean, I'll tell you on an arbitrary scale, it's not being compensated financially. I can tell you that, but I would argue that it's enormously valuable, and I think that fractally is speaking to one small piece of it that is plugging in the the analog value to the digital tokenized reward <laughs> he's trying to like fix the plumbing so it's a part of our list of team of priorities of team purpose is to really see how that coordination machine can be improved and vetted and finished and work in a decent okay. in a three well, you're uh, well, you're well, you're at it. Um, the other day, someone I don't remember who I think it was one of the observers sent a message on the on the group saying that they had this. Um, they were going to attend to the to the weekly meeting on, on fractally, and they had already they had written down all the things that they they, they had done on a Telegram article, and so there, there was like a kind of a way for them to to keep track on what they have been doing. So I haven't been to any of the fractal meetings. So I, I wanted to ask you, is this something that we should be doing? So if, for example, in the next meeting that we attend to, should we should we be saying uh, on what, what day is it today? Thursday? No, today is Wednesday, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's Wednesday. So. Uh, we, should we be saying uh, on that meeting, uh, we had this meeting on Wednesday and we talked about this and this and that, or more or less what we did, just so they see the value that, that we've been uh, working on through all this uh, this week. Is that more or less the way it, it's supposed to go? Absolutely. And that, that was me, I believe, that you're uh, remembering uh, putting up a... Uh, a uh, hey guys, this is what I did and it seems to be working pretty well where I have hopefully a short list, but it ends up being a long list because uh, item four on our uh, list of test team purpose is to realize one's individual value. Well, keeping a note, a, a list of notes, a, bull, a, a, a numerated list of notes of what we did to include uh, team member introductions. Well, that's a small art. Uh, to being able to record what your productivity units are for the week. And just being on a fractally team, there's only one other fractally team and that's fractally. <laughs> we're the only other fractally team. Okay, I thought, I thought there were more. I didn't know we were the second one. This stuff kind of sells itself as long as you put it in a list and say, hey, this is what I did. I had someone comment this last week that said, after I said everything, they said, how am I supposed to follow that up? Because that was such a, a strong list of items. But I was in the room with Dan Larimer and with Gregory Wexler, who both are working full time on Fractally. So the question is who did the most for Fractally in that meeting? And we all voted unanimously that Dan Larimer did the most, or it was Dan Larimer that has hired 12 people with brute force money 
to work on fractally. So we all decided, you know, I think he did the most this week for fractally, but I don't know. I don't know. We're, we're going to learn about what value really is, because if you have a best friend that gives you a million dollars versus uh, a not a, a uh, versus a uh, another best friend who uh, who is who sits with you in uh, good times and bad times, but doesn't give you any money to solve your problems when you need it. The, the first friend solves all your problems with a quick uh, signature. And you're like, wow, what a good friend. And then another one doesn't solve any of your problems, but he was there with you the whole time. And uh, he's your bro. Well, both of them are really good friends, but which one's more valuable? Oh, I don't know. So Dan Larimer pushes all in on 12 hires. And, um, and I say, well, yeah, I really don't know, but I definitely will vote for you for number one right now. But to see through the ambiguous nature of is Dan really the most valuable for, uh, for uh, Fractally? Because what if uh, a woman joined Fractally and, and she had a bunch of women that she was bringing to Fractally? I mean, th there's a male to female ratio there. Or what if e someone brought Elon Musk in one fell swoop? You know, I don't know how to manage that value system at all. All I know is that I'm putting down a list of things that I do. And I'm trying to bring it into the here. And then I'm trying to report it. I, I print it out in a photo and I put it right into the breakout room right at the beginning. And I say to them right when they say, okay, what have you done? I say, okay, I put a photo in the chat. I think you all can access. And I think it may be very helpful to open it up and look at it because I'm literally going to read it uh, top to bottom and speak to each of those just, just really swiftly. And I'm going to try to put this all within about 60 to 120 seconds. Okay, so we did real-time streaming video translation project movement. We did a Persian translation. We did an architecture draft. We did a mind web integration kickoff meeting. We're setting up compiling all information in the web pages. There's too much for the chats. And we're also working on setting up a decentralized database for YouTube video collection. It's internal to the team. Oh, and we created the following logos. Here's this one and here's the barcode, as you can see. So it's really slick. And yeah, we announced it on chats and we're really happy. So we have a team and I think we're the only other team on Fractally. So it's like 60 seconds and everybody goes, holy shit. So that's very valuable discussion between me and you right now because we're learning and pioneering something. And that is a lot of energy, is a lot of value. And, re and the respect token is meant to reward that dramatically so if it goes on a market in a year i hope that the respect token is worth a shitload and i hope we have a boatload of them <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. gotta earn some respect <laughs> Let's get us up, us up. hey look man oh by the way we got a team of four when we go there um when you sit in the meeting you, you number six it, number the highest most productive guy the least productive guy gets one the second least gets like three yeah according to you, this is uh, following the fibonacci sequence i, I saw yeah. that on the practically introduction video now what we didn't see was maybe because there was a lot of information and i really haven't parsed it but if we're a part of a team we get double whatever that is whatever number that mm -hmm. is we get double and half that goes to the team the treasury yeah and the other we can decide how to uh distribute it i think we just keep it for ourselves okay <laughs> it, you're, that's, uh, that's a simple way to do it yeah yeah version a keep all your stuff the other half maybe goes into a treasury sure okay let's just do that if it changes we can all obviously reach consensus among us team on how we want to go forward um, because right now we're trying to stand up these legs. And so I think we answered the question on that post that showed the list of notes. So, so what I think you could be doing this week, besides all that you're doing, which is bringing it together to stand up team membership, basically is almost mission impossible to me because it takes a lot of vulnerability. It takes a lot of cautious forward movement where there's no there's no, there's no real like momentum 
to, to pull you in or to pull you through or to push yourself through it all. It's all a lot of inertia, but uh, you did an intro, you joined the team, you um, checked in uh, frequently and it, you could name three topics of video translation, a generalized translation. You thought of three good ideas, like real ones, real good ideas. And then lastly, uh, yeah, you literally had like two or three Zoom video meetings to get to know your team. Well, that list sells itself. So if you can get a list together and you can show up to the piece on Saturday because timing is tricky, UTC, you got to transcode UTC to find out which time zone you're in. Just that alone will have, have uh, will, will, was critical uh, as a hard thing to basically do and do perfectly. All right, uh, question. The, the groups are arranged in six, in a group of six people. One of them is like the, it's not participating in the votation, I think. And the other five are the ones who uh, do the votation. Is, is this the way it works? Because you've been there already. So is this the way it works? It, six it, people, one of them doesn't vote, the other five do. It's close, but all six are involved. Okay. Um, there is an administrator that emerges I don't know how. I think we all just, somebody just takes the reins as administrator every week. Every, every group just has a guy that says, hey guys, okay, so do we all just want to introduce ourselves? Okay, go ahead. And then the six introduce ourselves and tell us what we've done for the week and they go around to six. Once that's done, um, one, person, uh, uh, one person says, hey, can we decide who did the most this week? And then everybody, all six of you decide, well, that guy that said all that did the most. And then they go, does everybody agree? And they say, okay, as long as four out of six of us agree. And if no one showed up for number six, then maybe there's only five of us. But basically we have a number six guy, absolutely. And um, at that point, he nominates who should be number five. I think so-and-so should be number five. And then the team goes, okay, I agree, agree, agree. Okay, that's number six and five defined. Then number five guy goes, I think we should nominate number uh, this guy for number four. And everybody goes, you know, and then it gets down to three, two, and then one, if it's the no-show, everybody gets at least a certain amount, depending, at, at least base number five, if there's a no-show. So um, that almost concludes. Then you get it together with typing in the consensus piece into Hive. And you, and you publish on Hive a copy-paste version of that comma-deliminated list of at Hive name, at Hive name, at Hive name. And it's like the first one is the number six, the second one is the number five, the third one is the number four, the fourth one is number three, and the number uh, one, if it's a no-show, is just like Hive at user or something. You copy the whole thing, you post it as a reply to the, uh, to the meeting Hive announcement chat, and all of your team does that. So you'll have six or five or six of them identical. And then they tally that manually on a spreadsheet. And I've verified it. I'm like, okay, I see. They're, they're actually adding everything up just manually right now. But the chain will launch in September to December or maybe January. And it'll all get captured in version 0 0.1 or version 1.0 of uh, Fractally, which is going to be... Uh, fucking crazy in a cool way <laughs> yeah i suppose so I, I mean dan said that he's been working a lot a lot every day like 85 80 percent of his time is spent coding so i just expect it to be great mm, me too i expect it to be really great i mean look at what look at his his legacy is great i mean I'm blown away. Yeah. <laughs> People may say may say that may have their remorses against him and say a lot of things, but the guy's a coder, and you can you can deny that. He has these great ideas, and only he has them, but he also brings them to reality. So it, that's amazing. Yep. So what I've put myself into as what I call a thought leader, based on his principles that are that are gathered at least in that book and it's also gathered in areas like this and in the chat rooms where we're able to elaborate beyond the scope of the book but for the most part it's all pretty well captured i challenged dan 
uh, in the chats two or three times because, um, for example, I asked in the land of tokenized rewards, how much will the, will the trolls and the troublemakers receive for their input to the community? And will they get remunerated for all that good work of hardening the network? I don't know how that's going to translate. And he said to me, well, if you've ever had kids, you know that if you don't get some kind of control, like kick the trolls out of the group, then the whole household becomes like chaos. So I said, okay, okay. that's a good answer. That's a good answer for now. But still, it doesn't tell me how valuable those children were for telling their mom to shut up. And then their mom saying, you're not going to talk to me like that. And then they, they take them, they lock them in the room. Then the household is back to being stable, but the kid doesn't get any money at all for that. But the kid actually inspires the mother to take control of her own life and to tell the child what to do. But the kid didn't get paid. So I think the kid is a very big player in that value system. And I don't think Dan can answer that by saying, kick him out of the community. Cause yeah, and I know a couple, I know a couple of, or two of, of those members. I can't, I can't think of a, a couple of names right now, but, you know, I'm not mentioning them, but I guess, you know, I guess, you know, like there are a couple of people that are active in the community that you see them everywhere, but uh, have these, uh, let's say, tempered um, uh, kind of thinking that, as, as much as we don't like it, uh, as much as we don't like the way they say things, at least they say those things. At least they, they tell us that we should do this or that. And that is also valuable, just like you said. So if they come up in my room and fractally, um, I'm liable to give them respect. I'm liable to vote for them when other people want to uh, say uh, that they're not helping. I'm liable to be a guy that says, well, I think they're helping. Yeah, because it makes sense. Even if they're just noisy. And even if they're saying, uh, like like that, that uh, like even if they're attacking the network, I'll say, I, I will open it up for, for dialogue and consensus. And that is the heart of Eden. And it's the heart of Fractally is not divergent, non-dialogue, non-relationship, but rather convergent dialogue consensus for a new status quo to, to be able to have power to change the situation. So right now we, we can't even come to the table, much less change the situation. So, because the distractibility of all the noise and it's too far beyond our, we, we can't have. No, but it's also been, been helpful to build up with the community is right now. And I, I'm so thankful. Be, I'm so thankful to that because Never have I ever been in, in a community like this one. I have to tell you, I've, I've never been in a community that is actually open to listen and to fight. But even if you do come up with a solution at the end, and you can see that in the fireside chat today, because Eves was telling was was telling people, all right, this guy has been saying that he has that he has not received any answers on some questions he had on, on the trust DVM. He was like, this guy, this particular gentleman has been saying that he has not been receiving any answers. And here are the answers. And if you look for them, you can find the videos in here. You can find the, the articles in here. And we've been spin footing all the information to everyone. And the information is everywhere. But every time you ask someone, someone points it at you again and someone replies. So there, there are answers. It's just... The, the fact that the guy was so willingly annoying, uh, it, kept the, it, it kept the topic coming back, back on top again and again. And so that makes it an opportunity for other people to see it as well. So it also helps. Well, that, that example is, is lovely. You know, the openness. Uh, I think this openness that uh, you're speaking to with Eves and with the documentation and with 
um, his his active uh, message at that one point in that AMA or that fireside chat, um, all of that uh, is uh, is 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 folding folding into. Uh, uh, I, I'm repeating what you're saying. I'm very happy to be a part of a community that is able to grow our ability to dialogue the way that Eve's said to the group in a fireside chat. That's like the legacy pinnacle for dialogue is a fireside chat. You know, the old president, Theodore Roosevelt, used to have fireside chats during a war where everyone listened to the radio and, and he would put people at ease and say, so they coming across the West here and we're really helping over here. And that's like a very good thing. Well, more or less like that. <laughs> it was fire. It was fire. It, it got pretty hot at, at some moments, but it was pretty good. So, so did, um, so did, uh, was, was, was Eve's missing a key piece or did Eve's, was Eve's, was Eve's correct originally in his thought that that he had done enough to communicate? No, the guy was the guy was saying I haven't received any answers, and he was saying, "All right, let's just uh, let's just uh, talk about this." Uh, this gentleman is saying that he has no answers. Here are the answers once again, and. For a, a millionth time, this is this and this and this and this is. And he said what, what, what the guy asked. But even Aaron uh, asked something about um, the. Uh, it was something that had something to do with the tokenomics of the of the um, trust token. Was it, is it trust? I don't remember. Trust EVM. It's the EVM token. EVM, the EVM token. Uh, he said, "All right, but are we going to get an airdrop, or what? What is it going to happen?" And he said, I'm, look, I've received this question so many times. And the answer is still the same that I've been repeating all along. It's, um, we're not finished on, on tokenomics yet. Uh, this is not completely done. We're discussing things. We're not going to do 100% an airdrop because that is going to fail. That is going to be a failure. And it's better to do it like this and like that. And and, and so we can it's not like we get the, the same money from the same community circulating all over again, which is something we've, we've already seen. We've already seen how, how it ends. He says, we're also going to get people uh, injecting money from BNB, from, from other chains. And so we're going to profit from them. So uh, this is what we want. And uh, it, it was meaningful for me that Aaron was the one that stood up and said, all right, this is the question. And we need the we need a clear answer, not not just saying that uh, all right, we're you know like uh, trying to to be evasive and not not answer straight when you're being asked. Uh, so he stood up for for everyone in the room and said, "All right, this is a question. Can you please give us a clear answer?" And he did. But the thing is that seeing people like that, and I. Have, I've been a witness of I've been a witness of the same thing between Eve and, and Dan. They've confronted at times saying, All right, you're saying this, but the reality is that things happen differently in, in the real world. And I've seen them I've seen giants like this clash, but it's been productive and it's been helpful. And it's even answered questions that all of us had, but we we didn't have the stage for asking the, those questions. Yes, yes, and yes. And uh, I do know in, in my experience, um, I often repeat, um, so one, one um, facet of, of communication that has emerged is the ownership is on the communicator as well as the one receiving the information. You know the uh, the responsibilities on both parties. You know, mm. and uh, also uh, communication is an extreme waste opportunity for like uh, hemorrhaging energy. 
uh, if it's not uh, done in a way that is, uh, is intact. And uh, so you'll have byproducts like miscommunication or repeating, repeating, repeating. Now I find repeating, repeating, repeating is worth it. So, so I will, and also saying things in public over, uh, uh, making sure that you say it in public, but tolerating the questions and the redundancy of, of cross-talking it across the whole group is actually a huge process for everyone to kind of come up to speed and, and, and really understand something. It's, uh, it's not what it seems, but, uh, but uh, you know, like right now, I don't know the details of the tokenomics. I, I, uh, I, I, no, and, <laughs> and, Not even. Yeah, and the fact that nobody does makes me realize. Yeah, well, that's a perfect candidate for uh, for a lot of like people not knowing something that they want to know and uh, waiting for it to come out, and it's not out, and then maybe directly, directly, and now directly, and finally publicly, and then being like, well, and then we'll do it again in two weeks to be like, have we done that yet? What's the status now? I mean, when is the, the thing? Oh, it's three months. And then we'll keep asking that. And they'll be like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. So that's, that's all seems like a very uh, routine situation where with us in translation, I understand bilingual, cross-lingual translation, but really translation floats into communication. It came up with Douglas and me too. So really this is scoped to a translation foundation. I get it, but I'm a communication guy. So I already see this is going to bleed into communication patterns that are uh, that are higher in um, in scope than uh, than just translating across languages. We're talking about just communicating interlanguage, all that uh, in gen generalized communication foundation that doesn't sell. But but uh, translation foundation does. Let's knock off the translation, increase the bandwidth, and when it comes to communication, sure we might rebrand ourselves to say. We're the guys that can speak in 10,000 different languages in English alone. Here's all 10,000 languages. We got picture grams, we got portals for education, you know, who knows about communication uh, across quote, non-communicating thresholds, like language, different languages, or like just different conceptual, uh, conceptual uh, resistance patterns of, of non-modularity or whatever that uh, that uh, e that are endemic to uh, any uh, community so I'm, I'm more interested in that even than i am translation but right now uh translation is a shoe in for like yeah let's increase the bandwidth across the so-and-so bring the network no, neural network and bring the tokenized piece move 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 solve 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 and then we can work with pictograms and children's books here soon down the line to bring it to the granularity across every language in different formats and so-and-so's to continue the communication path. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, that sounds great. Yeah. Now, I've, been, I've been amazed uh, of all the things that you've been, that you've been up to because I've, I've checked on, uh, on, the, on the chat and every time there, there is an idea and every time there is a, a resource and every time there is something to look at, like for example, there is a there is a picture right now of Douglas sharing a chat with with Zach. How did you get there? <laughs> At what moment we were speaking not, not too long ago? See, the the speed everyone is moving is just amazing. Uh yeah yeah. So I think this I'm I I basically uh put a post together a year ago uh, said in eoscommunity.org do we think that in a certain amount of time we're going to have metrics to 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 consider that the productivity value of these coordination systems like eden in this case it was just eden fractally was not born yet uh do you think the pro productivity metrics are going to clearly show a heightened or a a particular spike in productivity. And I got a 13 out of 13, yes, unanimous. And Dan Larimer was one of those. And I, I think I'm seeing that with the way that quit Chris Barnes dove into Eden and then represented it really well. And the next pattern, now we have Brock Pierce. I wanna see accelerated uh, 
exponential, for lack of a better term. I want to see really distinct productivity metrics that make me go, holy cow. Like, so I think all the answers are there. We just have to just speak to it and capture it and fix it. And all this, just as swiftly as you can move is more endemic of how this process is going to reveal itself as productive, as hyper productive. <laughs> At that whole point, I expect it to be, you know, that saying that goes uh, catch line in a, in a bottle. At some point, I, ex I expect it to be like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it feels like that. I've never heard that before. Yeah, learned that in one of the chats. I don't remember which one, but someone said it, and I was like, damn, that's uh, that feels accurate. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because because if we can uh, if if in one month we can we can kind of speak to our sustainability. I think we're going to look back at this month or two and go. That's amazing. Uh, we lived it. We, we saw it. <laughs> yeah. Look how far we've come. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so let's see if it, what happens. Uh, I, I look forward to a, a lot of items, but for example, uh, for example, uh, Shaw Cruz, he and I are going to do a, a connection in a virtual space for the first time. I've yeah, never done that. that. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I want to know what the. Now they're moving to the three. The three D world. What 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 is happening? I know. I, I know. At some point, uh, the yes, hot sauce try to do that with the crypto crypto box sauce. Is it called? I don't remember. It's like a like a three D world, something like more or less upland, but it's three in three D, and you can use a, an AR, an AR uh, set for you know watching the the yes, hot sauce on the and a big screen, something like that. Never really tried it because I don't have the, the devices, but that to me, that would sound, sounded amazing. And that's on, on Ethereum, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess you know it. What was it? Crypto voxels. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll be a little smarter in a week. And uh, also, um, uh, I'm interested in in testing that uh, basically for for practicality and its limitations and whatever. I don't I don't know. I don't care. I just want to see it, and uh, it might be interesting because <laughs> because uh, uh, Sha Sha Cruz, uh, I think uh, he's an he's basically an expert in VR. So do you now suddenly realize what a game changer it is to be coordinating the way we are? I, I, I don't really know if it is. I, I'll let you know in six months or so on Fractally. We'll see. But uh, right now it's looking pretty interesting to me. It's got all of my attention. I'm like, uh, I'm, uh, my interests are peaked on many different levels, uh, uh, like, like six or eight uh, distinct, uh, like uh, kind of rabbit holes that I'm, I'm, I'm exploring and enjoying. And that are I'm trying to bring sustainability into each of those. I, I don't necessarily, I, I don't really want, I don't really mind little bits here and there of flying off the handle, but I want to see if we can move into the the basics, call it productivity space, uh, sustainably, uh, freely, and decentrally, um, and uh, enjoy it, and have uh, ultimately be in line for a plan down the line for funding. You know, for to remunerate the the, the services. So I th I think all of the above, but I don't know. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's key not to get to. It's key to defend against uh, thinking that it's not working if it is. So I would like to uh, keep uh, speaking to its function in in the success factor to see if we can mobilize and, and maintain the mobility and uh, grow ultimately solve 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 and plug in so to speak and uh, watch it subjectively from the inside and say wow look what we did that was the most interesting thing I've ever yeah. seen in my life <laughs> in that moment when we have the the imposter syndrome I'm gonna be happy saying all right 
I don't know how and I don't know uh, what moment, but we did this. And hopefully be, be proud that we're being a, a, the benefit of the whole community as well, because I uh, one of the reasons I've, I've been thinking that we should aim for these spots that I, that I already shared is because the benefits to the, to the community as a whole are going to be seen from the very beginning. And not only we're going to be successful at, and doing something that personally I like, but also we're gonna be helping the, the rest of the people, which is something I, I've also liked. I've also liked as well. So uh, it's win-win. It's win-win. It, it looks that way. It may be win-win if it's successful. Um, the money in hand, uh, that has to come. That has to come. The whole thing has got to be funded uh, ultimately, uh, say in about a year, we got to see, well, what is that going to look like and is it going to work or not? Because armies of volunteers are very different than fully funded experts that are not imposters anymore, but rather uh, fulfilling their own uh, unique expression and being rewarded for that great value. So you, uh, I would ask, uh, any interest in joining tomorrow at uh, 1400 UTC, um, which is, what is your time zone? It's GMT minus four. So 14 UTC is 10 in the morning, perhaps. So if you know, if you find out what time uh, 1400 UTC is, uh, would you be interested in uh, joining a uh, discussion uh, uh, as an observer, uh, not an active participant. Uh, but just, yeah, as an observer uh, for the meeting between uh, the uh, Jesse, the lead of the EOSBs, and yeah, I know. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, and also uh, the uh, Ryan Lloyd, the head of Translate Me, and uh, I'm uh, I'm also a party, but. Uh, uh, I, my, my goal is to mother hen this so that it works. And, uh, and so my role is, is I want to delegate and, and offload this. I want to offload it and I want it to be working. That's it. We don't need a piece of this or anything. We want, we want it to be working. And so let's go over there, but it's informational it would be really nice. I think for you, um, and, uh, an alternative would be record it and review it later. But if you just joined, let's see if I can't get that good to go from uh, from Jesse and Ryan. Say, hey, you know, but I don't see why I wouldn't be able to because you know you're a team member of the uh, of the Translation Foundation. You're you're at the core, at the core, and and no, really, don't worry about that. What's that? I can't just be there listening. I, I don't I don't really mind just in, in watching you guys to see what what you come up with yeah that's great so i'll i'll uh i'll uh, put it in our uh, in our telegram dm uh douglas is already invited and uh he is uh, i believe the center stage active talking about the video translation that's where this sprouted so it's it's going to be this off subject where douglas is going to fire away and it's going to be awesome and ryan is going to speak to what is also going to be awesome because I think Ryan has a lot to say and offer for where they are on Translate Me for being able to serve up solutions as well. Uh, I don't know how the how, what's going to happen, but I I, uh, I think it'd be great. Uh, yeah. So if you're available, uh, I'll uh, put it in our chat, and then you and I can go like this, and then I can put the link in there, like hopefully 15 minutes before the meeting starts. I would like that. I've asked that that link. Be, be, be given to me 15 minutes before, but I don't know if that'll happen. And I, I didn't ask for this specific meeting, but it would be better because then everybody can get set up. But right on time is okay enough too. also probably for, it's not an introduction meeting anymore. You know what I mean? So if, if it's just right at the dot, that's fine too. And you join in the middle and everybody just talk and you join right in and listen. But, um, but, but I, think, I think what that will help uh, is introduce you to uh, to Ryan uh, a little bit with uh, from the periphery um, rather than a direct introduction. 
and uh, and uh, it'll it'll help. But uh, um, basically, I know you you know you're set up, man. Uh, what we talked about simplicity was that notepad. If you had a list of items and you uh, roll into the fractally rhythm, um, yeah, you're basically we're I think we're all we're all going to be pretty solid candidates for a uh, for an organization that's pretty much as uh, as uh, as 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 uh, bona fide as the EOS support or the EOS Bs or any of those that have successfully stood themselves up in the last year. I think we're candidates for being able to uh, to have a niche and a place as as not an imposter, but rather a subject matter expert and a, and a real productive member of the community. And and maybe we'll get paid for it if, if fractally successful. Um, yeah. No, no. Uh, uh, maybe you call that. I don't know if you're using the the same word because I used it, but I say imposter syndrome, which, which is which is a, a an an actual um, syndrome. It's when you feel like it, when you look when you look back at your at your successes, and you don't really feel like you did those. That's what I want us to feel. Oh, like, I thought it was currently feeling like an imposter in real time. No, no, I, I mean, I, I want to have impost, imposter syndrome in, in the future, saying, looking back at, uh, at us uh, right now, at this time, maybe watching at this, at this very same meeting and record it and seeing, right, that's what, where we were. And look at all we have done this far. Just like you say, like, look at all we did. We have already accomplished so many things that it, it no longer feels like we did, like we did it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I I I I understand better now, and, and uh, I really don't know if six months from now we'll say we were we were imposter feeling, uh, you know. But I I doubt it because we're looking at a lot of stuff. I mean, if nothing else, uh, Jesse's response a week ago when he when he looked at what we had to offer. Uh, and his eyes lit up after a good question and a second good question. Then he said, I love it. And uh, when can we go, go, go. And uh, we're, it's on. Amazing. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, I think we, uh, we, we, uh, we did something there. And then, uh, but uh, with, with uh, what we're doing uh, for, for basically, Offload all your translation stuff. We can handle helping, uh, or, 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 or if you like, you know, we, we can manage channels, uh, appropriate channels, so that the bees can do what the bees do instead of fucking dealing with translation systems. You know, but it's going to be a mix probably between us and the bees because they, we, we would, we need finishing for our translation uh, as far as the engine goes, and and we don't as a as a foundation we don't want to take on finishing translators but we will find the right church and the right pew to hand that workload off of and we'll be the we'll be the the folks that have reach everywhere and to absolutely know the state of trans translation if someone asks us about video or zoom or what fractally is going to embed in in exactly. there so, so they can focus on content creation and we can focus on translating that content Yeah, and if and if they're if they're bilingual people uh, innately contribute to the translation process, then then yes, that is a great function for the bees. <laughs> Still, despite it being translation heavy, uh, we don't know the answer to that because it's almost written into their their model is many people who can finish off translation and other imagery uh, to communicate. So, so, so. Nah, but we'll get we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah, 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 exactly. And and I I, I don't know, but if I had to guess, I'd say there was just going to be an enormous amount of overlap across all of these different areas, uh, ENF and the bees and everything. And so the foundation is a good thing to be able to go. We're we got our ears to the ground, and we are 
people that can get answers absolutely know what's going on. And just by that alone, we're extremely valuable being able to quarterback whatever need to increase the bandwidth across the whole community, you know? Yeah. No, I hope to see, I hope to see uh, goals like, uh, like Pomela in, in more than the three languages it is right now for the next season, for example. And uh, we can do that. We can get there. We're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, I like the timeline on that. By season three, uh, add you know, add X number of languages slash whatever we can we can push into. Uh, uh, so uh, right now, our limit for the uh, engine is ten projects. So um, I think we're still under that with everything we've listed so far, even including like ENF and stuff. But I'm not sure uh, we're ready. I, I want demonstrations. I want. I want to I want to see the tech applied. I love this Jesse thing because I think we're about to have some demos and really really warm fuzzy feelings that this works after we get through a couple rounds of this and go okay okay it's working now let's turn to Palmelo and say here's the, what we got this is working we'd like to do it for you Eve's LaRose your ENF here's what we can offer and it's exciting we set it all up and da 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 all within this quarter or so, you know, and I think that can be done. So that's the, that's, that's what I think we're doing with uh, right now with uh, first, it was EOS chatbot uh, where uh, God bless Kevin. He, he quickly worked with the API and I looked at it. I said, Oh, that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm typing stuff and it's translating and stuff. Okay, great. And a year ago I did it just with the translate me, but the integration into EOS projects is tricky. So we've been working on that. And it's crawl, walk, run. And we got rejected for season one, Palmelo, <laughs> based on, oh, it's not a public good. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. but we offer, for, we made it clearer for season two and we and we got accepted. And that's key because now we have a, uh, a demo, uh, we, we have a reference point uh, uh, for, for people to know who we are. And then for uh, solutions abound uh, because Patrick from Nova Crypto is now integrating this really cool original vision of mine was an EOS translation portal. And Dan Larimer reached out to me and said, I hear you're interested in building a portal, expect an invite to Eden. So that's great. Cause I set up a stage with him, Eves and Aaron Cox, where the Tesla fanboy on Twitter, he's got 50,000, 100,000 followers or something. He reached out to me and said, because I said, watch out for Cardano, man. This is all about governance. Be very careful. And he said, you want to do a clubhouse chat? I said, yes. And I said, Dan, Eve, Aaron, and I got anybody I could. And they all three sat there and had a one, two hour, one and a, one and a half hour conversation with, with this guy that's got the voice of the entire Tesla community. Uh, fanboys you know those those people they're basically warriors you know and they all got rich <laughs> i was like what the fuck man dan larimer goes i have to leave this meeting it's been an hour and i have a previous commitment and the guy warren redlick the voice for for tesla he says i i love you you're brilliant i'm so happy i called this <laughs> meeting and ate out we just blew blew the mind you know it was great man but we have that on video. I put that on my website. You know, it's like a one hour crypto cryptocurrency discussion. And he asks all the right questions. And Dan Larimer, Eves and Aaron Cox were there to, to speak, you know, and they did. And uh, that sounds amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, there was, I told you, uh, last year I was in a, in a, in a chat, in a voice chat. And uh, I got I got Eves because he was in the Eden's member in the Eden members group. Eves was around and he said, "All right, I can have a voice a voice uh, chat right now, but only if there's at least five people active." I was like, "All right, I'm here." And I went to the Eves project uh, chat and I was like, uh, "Dan, 
Eves is around here and he wants to talk. And he actually replied and said, all right, I'm going there. And the conversation started like with, a, with like nine, nine to 10 people, something like that. And I was in the middle just listening and I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm, I'm listening to, to Dan and in, in Eves and Jesse was there too. And some other, some other guys. And I'm like, boy, I'm in the middle. And that was a moment, that was a time when, when Eves was uh, having an argument with Dan because he was like, I remember clearly that he told him, you are dreaming if you think that we're going to get uh, Eden, the Eden structure to trial in a month. Because he has said that. That was when he, when he published his, uh, his article on the, on the dispute resolution. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I was there. I was in the in that chat, and that felt amazing. I know more or less. I mean, what you're saying is completely another level, but I more or less kind of know what it feels. Yeah, 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 yeah. And my interpretation is uh, that makes a uh, a person in your position very very valuable. Is like it's it's a weird thing. I, I I've tried to accumulate as much experience and. It made me feel super excited. That's yeah. what. That's what yeah. I mean. Yes. Yeah. And I say it's, episodes like this have, have actually ensured me that uh, this is a great community because I don't see any other in which I could actually do that. I don't see myself speaking with a uh, with with Vitalik or someone like that. I don't. I don't see how that could be possible because there is. Not because I, not because I cannot as a human being, but because there is no link between the, between him and the community, or at least I don't see it like that. Between him and, the, and his community, so close that anyone could actually talk to to little like that, and I felt good. I felt amazing. Yeah, that's interesting, and and I've of course been in uh, like three of Dan Larimer's uh, fractally breakout breakout rooms where it's only like four or five of us on a Zoom call, and I say. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I was with Aaron once in, in the first. Uh, no, it was. I think it was Aaron and uh, John from John Boyd. He uh, and uh, Matthias, the one from from the Zeos protocol. Ah. And I was in the first in the first room with them for in the first selection uh, group. And the, yeah, dude, that was amazing. It was like, Jesus, I don't know. This is how I met these people. Still talk, I still send send messages on, on the groups and talk to them, but it's completely different, you know, being in the same space and and interacting like that. Yeah, I wonder who you'll see this weekend. I want to uh, experience that. Uh, kind of in a way, I guess, as a curiosity of, of how our team is going to slowly integrate into, into their uh, competency. Because, you know, we're going to be the definition of competency just because we're a team. And how is that going to reflect in, in, in a way on, on how we take ownership of fractally? So... It, <laughs> you know, we, we go take ownership of fractally, basically. We go in there and, and everybody looks at us basically like, oh, you're fractally. We're like, so I, I would speak. I just say, you know, hey, I'm very happy to be here. You know, this is helping us manage our team. And uh, we're able to test fractally. And we're going to fulfill a larger mission to increase the bandwidth across the language groups. And they're all like, whatever you say, man. Yeah, but I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, okay, me too. I, 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 uh, I honestly, I'm like a kid in a candy store on Saturday mornings, you know? Yeah, uh, totally. Has Douglas been in, in one of the, was he in the last meeting? Doug was, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's super chill. It, yeah. It's, it's great to talk to him. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. He is, man. I, He's so amazed by everything. It, it, I was talking to him and I said, and he told me, I've been here for three months only and there is so much I, I want to learn. Hmm. 
And there is, because that's how I felt. I remember that's how I felt. Like I wanted to learn everything. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I, I think, uh, I think we're, we're all doing well at being able to do, do anything in the middle of, in the middle of that, wanting to kind of be everywhere and, and kind of spread out. Uh, so this is, I think one of those everything units is to actually engage with something. And everyone kind of like just said, yeah, sure. It was pretty clear, you know, um, the team came together organically. It was bizarre. And my only criteria was that we have four members. It was Fractally's rule. As soon as we get four, I'm launching the thing. We'll have a team. <laughs> and everybody's like, those were your rules. <laughs> Because you can't create a team below four for Fractally. That's their rule. You can't have a team of three. They won't let you. Yeah. You know that? Right yeah. Watch the videos they have on the, on the YouTube channel because I was like, all right, this, I have to get into Fractally. And, and I was completely new. I'm still completely new at it. And uh, I went to the YouTube channel and I watched, uh, they have like four videos in there. They don't have that many. And they're not too long either. So I watched them all. And uh, then I went to the to the group, downloaded the the application the application to and started reading everything they had in there. I'm like, all right, the information is here, and I can read it, and I understand, but I still want to see it in practice because I, I need to know exactly how how he how he happens, how one thing ends and the other one begins, and that's what I want to see. I, I was wondering if they had if they recorded the the last meeting. They record the uh, community, but not the breakout room. So I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna do a screen recording of my breakout room because I. Uh, they're not on file anywhere. They're not doing that. They will in, when the when the chain launches, when they launch the contract, and it's. I don't know if it's gonna be on EOS. I think it will be, but that's. I asked Dan straight up four months ago, "Are you gonna build Fractally on EOS?" And he said he hasn't decided yet. That was just after the three point four million dollar bid you know, rejected. The ENF said, no, 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 no. You got to yeah, put it. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. It was like, no, we're not, we're not funding you. <laughs> so it was very interesting. I loved it. You know, I love Fractally. I love what Eve did with the ENF and rejecting the $3.4 million. I'm neutral. I think it's exciting. Uh, and uh, I'm all in, uh, in all those spaces because I love what, what we're doing. We're, we're engendering something. It's a uh, magic basically. Okay. Well, hell man. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, the should be a breeze as far as uh, moving out on on what we all think we may want to uh, move out on uh, the notion piece. Take it and run with it. The notes for Saturday. Take it and run with it. Just being able to bring yourself together to move into the Saturday item might be all you you feel you can do, which is good too, uh, because that that take a lot of know how to get your hive set up or it's probably already okay but getting everything in a row to, to create the uh competency enough to to know where you're going to be and what you're going to do uh because they open it up like at, at like um three let's see 15 30 i think is the uh it opens up at wait so i think it's like 10.30 a.m. my time, which is 11.30 a.m. your time, I think it opens up. And then I think at 11, it starts my time, but it'd be about noon your time, but don't hold me to it. Go to the site and see uh, it's EOS, it's Eden EOS. No, no, it's actually all through Joshua. Uh, it's all through his site, that one. Uh, I could put that link in, in the chat, reach out to me or I'll, do you know where you're going to go on Saturday at all? It's on, uh, I mean, I have the, the application and in the application, I can find the fractal, the fractal group. So I suppose it's in there. The results, there's also a calendar in there. It tells you when the, the thing is happening and it converts the time as well, which is great because it tells you exactly the time in your, in your time zone. Yeah. So, uh, you can schedule it from there. The thing is that I forgot to, to do it. Like I saw it, but I forgot to schedule it on my channel calendar. 
So that's why I couldn't I can attend on time for for today. But that's how you find the how, that's how you would find the, the the meeting in the next Saturday. But for the last one, I don't know if I can go to to Joshua's profile or something and maybe find the recording somewhere. Um, I'll put it in our chat. In fact, I'm going to lead all of us up to that moment of uh, being in the fractally room on Saturday uh, through our uh, EOS translation team chat. So uh, that's all you really need. Great. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be putting like whatever link is required, and if it's if it's something, I'll I'll probably end up pinning it and saying, hey, for this Saturday or whatever, it it should be pretty easily accessible in the in the in our team chat. Uh, and uh, I'll be putting like, if it's really key, I'll put everyone, everyone on there. So it'll be sent to everyone or something like that. But uh, yeah, well, well, this is a big deal, uh, getting it together to, uh, to, to build a little bit of flow and momentum for these weeklies, because uh, that fractally is kind of almost all about those meetings. They're about uh, two hours of your time to, to go through the whole sequence and uh, to be done with it. It's like, oh, that was pretty interesting. And you're, you're gone, you know, they're tallying it all up manually. So uh, I will definitely be mother henning all of that um, uh, for this for this week because uh, our our chat our team chat is so much now we're so dynamic now that uh, that's appropriate to to put that kind of information all in there you know yeah it's yeah. full of resources as well yes 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 yeah but um, so uh, I think it was a great introduction I, I love meeting you Oscar you're you're Great to to uh, great. It was great. Full great. full of energy. And that's yeah. what I I felt every time I, I met with you. Because it's all this information that we're going in in a good direction, and we're going to do uh, great things that are going to benefit not only us but the whole community too. And I like that. That's my passion. So here we go. Hey, here here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, great intro. And uh, I, I recorded this, so I'm actually going to post it somehow to to uh, to Douglas. I think I'm going to try to put the whole recording just right in the chat. He can do what he did yeah. last time. Hopefully an hour Can't and a half. Work. He's going to have a lot of fun with it. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll do it. He's a dynamo when it comes to managing the video and and, and all that. So uh, well, I, my goal is to, to continue to uh, speak to and dialogue with with where we're going. You know, and, and so that's exciting. But uh, with this video, I know we already have a pattern there. He's got three videos on on a uh, EOS Translation Foundation YouTube site that he's yeah. even, he's <laughs> Doc, you're great. You're doing great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then and then he was talking DTube or something. But so all that is uh, is uh, basically uh, we're, we're it's on schedule and and we're on track. So uh, I'm going to put the video up here and. Uh, We'll see what he says about it. I think he'll like it. You know, yeah, be awesome. yeah because Shock Cruise, it was a, a big success. Also, I really enjoyed it. We, we talked for about an hour, and uh, I can't wait to meet up with him again because I'm going to hopefully have that VR thing. <laughs> but I can't wait to see you again, too. So, uh, hey, I look forward to having an all four team meeting sometime in the next like week or two, or week probably, you know, a few when you can, when, it, when it's appropriate, you know. But, uh, We'll know that. So, yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be doing that. Well, I'm gonna be doing this, and uh, then I'm gonna be doing the notion part and try to figure out if I can if I can move all the administrative rights to to someone else. Yeah, and if we we can organize some something about that here, uh, maybe and hopefully try to see if we can if we can add more more items to that list. Yeah, that sounds great. Sounds great. Have fun with that, and uh, and I'll, I'll check you later, and uh, and hit me up anytime, uh, uh, either in the chat or a DM. Yeah, you too, man. Thanks for your time. Likewise, thank you. You're welcome.